that Ramadan came and Ramadan went. That's what it feels like. But what did we gain from Ramadan? What did we gain from this blessed month? When Allah was giving so much for free, all we had to do was ask from Him through our worship. That's the way we were asked from Allah, through our worship. When all we had to do was ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through our worship, and so much Allah tabarak wa ta'ala kept to give, to be recorded in our book of deeds, which will be of use to us in the hereafter, what was it that we gained? Does our spiritual balance look any better than it was when we started Ramadan? Or does it look worse? Or is it the same? First of all, to evaluate the past eight days and to see that have we benefited or not, we have to first of all understand the purpose of Ramadan. And many times we have heard the bayans from this member and from other members as well, where the ulama have explained the purpose of fasting. Sometimes when we ask people, what is Ramadan? What is a fast? Then people usually say, oh, Ramadan is about just not eating, not drinking. And we limit our knowledge to this, that not eating and not drinking, refraining from food and drink, this is Ramadan. Some people will say, it's, it's nothing. We just delay our meals, change our meals timetable. That we should eat one o'clock, three o'clock, whatever. We just take it all the way to sunset and we don't eat from sunrise uh, from suba sadiq you have these kind of answers and you will also find some muslims i say from experience that they fast but honestly they don't know why they're fasting they can't even give these answers that i gave so they don't know why they're fasting hey, where am i muslim i have to fast i'm fasting which is good as well. But if we don't understand the purpose of doing something, then we're not going to fully benefit from doing that act. What is the aim and objective of everything, anything you do in life? What's the purpose of me doing this? What am I going to receive at the end? What is it in it for me? We have to understand all of this. Then we know what we're trying to achieve, what we're trying to acquire. So Allah tabarak wa ta'ala mentions the purpose of fasting. In the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also mentions the purpose of fasting. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says in the quran Kareem, the verse which I recited of Surah Al-Baqarah, he says that, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O believers, kutiba alaykum usiyam, fasting has been prescribed upon you. كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ Just as it was prescribed upon the nations before you. And this is the important part. Don't just listen to the translation, but try to understand beyond the translation. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may increase in piety. So that you may gain piety. So that you may become God-fearing so that you may become God conscious. Several ways I've tried to translate to explain and give it a meaningful translation. So the purpose of us not eating and drinking is so that we can gain this skill, this strength, this ability within us to be able to fear Allah in all our affairs. Before we do something, we take a step back and that's fearing Allah. We ask Quran and Hadith, that's fearing Allah. Is it permissible for me to do this or not? Once you have then decided in night of Quran and Hadith, then proceed, go forward. So the ability and the strength that even when Ramadan comes to an end, for us to be God-fearing, that is something that throughout the 11 months we start to decrease in, and some lose it totally, that they don't fear Allah whatsoever. In the hadith, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, narrated by Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, Man lam yada' qawl al-zuri wal-amala bihi, falaysa lillahi hajatun an yada'a ta'amahu wa sharaba. In this <coughs> hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man, one, lam yada' qawl al-zuri wal-amala bihi, who does not leave, who does not abandon. Qawl al-zuri means, Verbal sin. That's the best translation with a, with, a, with a meaningful translation. Verbal sin. So swearing at somebody, reviling somebody, backbiting, slandering, speaking a lie. All of this comes into qawl az -zur. So during the month of Ramadan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever does not leave verbal sin, وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ and physical sin okay, physical sin with your hands you might be turning music on with your feet you may be going to a place of sin you might be not coming to the masjid you might be going towards somewhere else apart from the masjid when it is salat time you might be hitting somebody being physically violent towards someone all of these are examples. So a verbal sin and a physical sin. If a person in the month of Ramadan, he does not leave these. He does not detach himself from these. Then Allah's Rasul said, فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةً Then Allah has no need. Allah has no need for you to stop eating and drinking. Meaning for you, to refrain from eating and drinking. Because Allah's Rasul is explaining here that the purpose of fasting is not just to refrain from eating and drinking. But the purpose of fasting is that you refrain from verbal sin and you learn how to refrain from verbal sin. That you refrain from physical sin and you learn how to refrain from physical sin. Refraining from eating and drinking is the process, is what we are doing that is going to help us to achieve the aim and objective. The aim and objective of fasting is not to refrain from eating and drinking, is to refrain from verbal and physical all types of sins. But how are we going to do that? The way we're going to do that is by refraining from eating and drinking. That is going to help us and support us in achieving that aim. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that, فَإِن سَابَّهُ أَحَدْ أَوْ شَاتَمَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي مْرَعُمْ صَائِمٌ That if you are fasting in, during the month of Ramadan and somebody comes and he starts to quarrel with you, قَاتَلَهُ or shatamahu or sabbahu, he is verbally abusive towards you. He swears at you, he provokes you, he speaks ill about you. So you should reply back not by being verbally abusive towards him or committing a sin towards him. He has committed his sin, that's upon him. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the way you should reply back is say, Brother, I am a fasting person. I am observing a fast. And my fast demands from me that I do not react towards you in a sinful way. Therefore, I'm going to leave and I'm going to go. So from this hadith we learn as well that the objective of fasting is to refrain sin, refrain from sin, is not to Commit sin is not to carry on committing sins as a person may have done in the previous months. If he is, then he's not gaining anything. He's not going to be able to achieve the purpose of fasting. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that As-siyamu <coughs> jannah As-siyamu jannah which translates that fasting 
is a shield. Just like a person, if he is in the battlefield, then he may wear armor. And that armor and that body gear is to protect his body from physically being hurt from the bullets, from the sword, etc. But during the Prophet's time, when the battles were in the open field, then people used to have sword, spear in one hand, and in the other hand, they would have the shield. The shield is to protect yourself from the person attacking you with the sword, with the spear, with the arrow. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, that just like a person uses the shield, to protect his body from harm. In the same way, as Jannah, that fasting is a shield. When a person is fasting, then he is protecting his iman. He is protecting his deeds from being corrupt. From Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has given you this tool to save your deeds, to protect yourself from committing sin. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said it is like wija for the young ones. For young people who cannot get married, then if they want them, if they want to protect their desires, etc., then the prescription for them is fasting. Obviously, one day, two days, three days of fasting is not going to uh, is not going to help, but a number of days, a week, two weeks of fasting, if he does it properly, then it will weaken his desire. It will diminish his desire. Now he won't be inclined towards fulfilling his desire. Rather, he will protect himself. So from this verse of the Quran, which I recited at the beginning, and from these three different ahadith, I have explained that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has very clearly explained the purpose of fasting. And this is, like I said, a good time for us to reflect over the past days, the eight days that have passed. That did we refrain from sin? If before Ramadan started, we were committing a particular sin constantly, or we were just sinful in different ways. Has there been a decrease in me committing that sin? Or am I still committing the sin? Or have I increased in sin? Because there's more time now. Sometimes you hear people that they are planning a different Ramadan. That because they have a lot of time in their hands, that's why they are going to fill that time with catching up on series of movies and dramas, etc. Aliyazu billah, may Allah protect us all. That this is a good time. I've got a lot of time. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink for uh, during the daytime. So therefore, I will be able to. I will be able to catch up on all these dramas, etc., that I missed when I was busy before Ramadan. If that's the way you want to spend your Ramadan, then what benefit are you going to gain? So, like I'm, I'm saying time after time, this is a good time for us to. Now change if we still have not changed. Change our days of fasting. Change the way we are living in our, in our homes.